thank you very much, Iraj, for making time to share your insights into the future of leadership. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. It's a pleasure to be with you. And before we go into your insights about leadership, can we quickly learn a little bit more about your journey? Where did you grow up? I was born in Iran, uh, in the northern part uh, or center north, uh, in a village uh, back in the 1955. And a village that had no water, no electricity, no basic infrastructure. So I'm a, a, a rural boy. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So when did, you come, when did you come to Africa? Um, I came to South Africa in uh, January 1980. Uh, I had done my first degree in Iran at Tehran University in economics and um, enrolled at University of Cape Town for an honors degree in economics. And what was your dream career when you grew up? When I was growing up, I had uh, a very uh, uh, deep uh, and ingrained interest in, in global human affairs. So uh, economics, sociology, and politics always appealed to me. Um, I read a lot of uh, biographies of philosophers who traveled in the ancient days to China, to the Middle East, to Far East. And um, uh, my dream career was a profession that I can understand human systems, human cultures, and the human uh, knowledge base. So I didn't have any particular degree in mind, uh, like to become an economist or to become a sociologist, but I knew I, I, I loved people, I loved different social systems, so I ended up pursuing economics. Now, today you are the leading economist in South Africa and possibly in Africa, so can you tell us who or what inspired you along your way to come this far? Many people, many uh, principles. Uh, my primary source of inspiration has actually been my faith belief. I'm a follower of the Baha'i faith, uh, became a, a Baha'i in my uh, late teens, uh, 17, 18, and uh, drew a lot of inspiration from the principles of um, of uh, unity of humankind and and the importance of of social scientists in uh, promoting unity unification and human civilization so that's been my primary motivation primary inspiration along the way of course a lot of individuals have uh, have inspired me uh, people like uh, martin luther king uh, the American uh, civil rights uh, activist. Mm -hmm. uh, in, in India, uh, Gandhi has been a, an absolute uh, inspiration. And of course, when I came to South Africa, I began to learn uh, about uh, Mandela and uh, his inspirational leadership. Um, so at the top level, those have been my primary inspirations uh, as a human being, as a student of social science. In my educational journey, uh, a lot of my professors have, have contributed a great deal to my understanding of the issues in Africa. And looking back at your career, would you say there was a turning point where things could have gone differently? Absolutely, there have been many, many turning points in my, in my life. And I like to believe uh, in every human uh, journey, there are a number of turning points. Uh, my decision to come to Africa possibly was the, the most important uh, turning point in my life um, when I was 22, 23. Um, that, that was critically important uh, to shape my, my, not geographic location, but also my intellectual and emotional location. Uh, then other turning points has been along the way, certainly 1994 in South Africa was an important turning point for me to watch a society liberating itself uh, in a peaceful manner or relatively peaceful manner, despite all the uh, doom and gloom that many had uh, 
had predicted, um, that was a very insp inspirational and a turning point in my own growth. And what would you say is driving you today? For me today, what's pushing me and, uh, and uh, getting me excited is uh, there is so much that we can do. There is so much positive thing that we can do for our uh, fellow humans, uh, both in neighborhood, in the nation, in the continent and globally. Um, and yet there is so much confusion about basic stuff. So I'm inspired to get up every morning and say, okay, I'm going to do a little bit on my side, uh, however humble it might be to make a positive contribution without ignoring um, the relative reality, the, the negative reality around us, um, to not get bogged down by, by negativity and to, um, to look for positive things to do is what inspires me every day. Now, Iraj, let's talk about leadership. What does the future of leadership mean to you? Leadership, like most other faculties or, or capabilities, um, is something that that is not a static it's dynamic it's it keeps changing uh, as we learn more about ourselves and and people around us and from people around us um, and these days the meaning of around us has become global truly uh, the more we we redefine leadership um, leadership once upon a time was um, equivalent to dictatorship to force to imposition to power, physical power, it has changed a great deal to mean a lot more than just um, dictating to people around you and forcing and imposing and demanding compliance. It has become a lot more in the sphere of uh, leading by example, uh, demonstrating in action and in your postures, uh, humility and integrity. Um, and strength of character in the form of service and learning as opposed to uh, pretension and, uh, and, and uh, demanding compliance. So for me, leadership means a very dynamic capability of human beings that we, we need to open ourselves to it. We need to be uh, humble enough to, to learn every day and to be... Uh, honest enough to acknowledge when we've gone wrong and um, to have flexibility uh, to improve every single day a day that passes that uh, uh, that we haven't learned something uh, then we abdicating leadership and what have you learned from your own journey that you consider most important for building future leaders for me um if I was going to choose two words, one is integrity and one is humility. Uh, one has to have uh, integrity. Uh, integrity is the, the key uh, essence of human being. And humility, humility in, uh, in, in acknowledging that we all have uh, fault lines, we all have uh, uh, vulnerabilities, we all have uh, the, the ability to make mistakes, but at the same time, uh, we, we have incredible capability to, to rise to the occasion, to take chances in, in, with good intentions. So for me, uh, integrity and humility are the two pillars of good leadership uh, as I've learned them. And when you speak to future leaders, what is it you tell them they should focus on for future-proofing their career? Um, flexibility to learn, to, to be ever conscious and alert that uh, uh, skills and knowledge uh, are ever changing. Um, you cannot be static. You need to always be going forward, otherwise you go backwards. Um, a leader who, who is uh, humble enough to know that there is a lot to learn, uh, listens, uh, with a view to learn, with a view to change for the better, um, and be courageous enough to change no matter how much you have to change. Change is inevitable in our environment, and for every good leader, uh, a, a dynamic change is part and parcel of good leadership. Now, let's talk about technology. 
what would you say are the key technologies or maybe tools of technology that will be driving the future leadership? Um, technology at the moment uh, is going through a, a very disruptive phase um, because there is such a revolutionary tectonic uh, change in our socio-economic and political uh, milieu that we have grown up to. We, we've always been used to some form of equilibrium in, in politics, in, in economics, in the financial sector, uh, in technology itself. Um, those days at the moment are gone. At the moment we're going through a, a phase of transition from a relatively stable to a highly unstable technological uh, plateau. And as we move there, uh, it's very important to, to have flexibility to uh, A, understand that uh, technology is, is disrupting, revolutionizing our otherwise peaceful life. Secondly, we don't know what the next equilibrium will, will look like. How it will stabilize, we don't know. So leaders have to be completely open and alert to various possibilities. Without a doubt, when this, this tectonic change, when this revolutionary phase ends, a new equilibrium will emerge. In the meantime, and as we go through this transition, leaders need to be alert not to dismiss any possibility, but at the same time not to be too committed to any particular technology that may end up not being sustainable. It is really a very difficult time for uh, betting on, on what will win, but what we can do is to change our own mindset to our own emotional platform, if you like, to be open to a fairly uh, dramatic and revolutionary outcome from all the disruptions around us. Now, when you speak to future leaders, which social media platforms do you advise them to use to build their personal brand and to grow their influence? Depends on the personality, depends on, the, on their uh, predisposition in terms of social media. Social media is both exciting but highly dangerous. Um, if you don't uh, uh, deal with it wisely, like any other technology, social media for me is like a technology. Uh, electricity once upon a time was a technology that our forefathers didn't know how to cope with. Uh, and those who didn't uh, take it seriously they damage themselves, they hurt themselves. Some of them actually kill themselves, not just shock themselves. So social media at the moment is, is a capability that's incredibly powerful, uh, incredibly enabling, uh, creating connectivity, but also its feedback effect on human psyche, um, uh, all of us, uh, is fairly new and we don't know how to manage it. So we are excited. Uh, but in our excitement, we need to be careful not to uh, make it harmful to ourselves and to people around us and to the society and at times even to our companies and to our innovations, um, to our entrepreneurship and so on. So social media, which one do you use? Do you go Facebook? Do you go Twitter? Do you go Instagram? It depends on your personality. But whichever ones we use, uh, first of all, we cannot uh, stay away from them. We need to engage with it. Um, but in our engagements, we need to be measured and we need to take care of the basic uh, requirements of human conduct. By that, I mean integrity, truthfulness, ethical conduct, and so on and so forth. The minute that we get carried away and we allow social media platforms to shape us, to present us, to brand us, then uh, it's a, like a horse rider who allows the horse to take you where the horse wants to go as opposed to the jockey who has to decide where the horse has to go. Okay. I like that uh, analogy and I think, mm -hmm. I guess it has a lot to do with your motherland, Iran, I believe you uh... <laughs> Now, Now, Iraj, you're holding a great influence in the leadership debates in this country and in Africa. So um, can you maybe share a success story or two where you advised and mentored an aspiring leader and they really took your advice to heart? 
Look, I've had the privilege of um, teaching at the university 20 years, University of Cape Town, uh, uh, as economics professor and, and lecturer. Um, so I've had many opportunities to, um, to engage with very brilliant uh, students who have sought my advice, who I have at the time, at any time, uh, given the best I could in terms of uh, advising them in terms of their career, in terms of their, uh, their, their choice of profession. Um, and I'm delighted to, to run into them these days as, as very professional, successful people in business, uh, in the financial sector, in the industrial sector, um, and see them flourishing. And from time to time, um, I'm absolutely flattered when they come and uh, tell me that, look, in 1985, this is what you told me, or in 1991, this is what you advised me, and uh, I took that advice. So that is, that's been my uh, journey in terms of uh, working with, with uh, graduate and postgraduate students in terms of uh, giving advice, and a lot of them I find grateful for now telling me that they've taken heed of my advice, um, even if I don't know where they are, the fact is that I know um, they are grateful. And for that, I feel honored and grateful. Now, can you maybe tell us who are the role models of leadership that you feel future leaders should study and learn from? Look, there are um, leaders. Uh, these days, leadership is a far more dispersed uh, faculty and capability. For example, in public life, uh, in, uh, in uh, social movements, in the financial sector, in the political arena, uh, and so on and so forth. Uh, for example, if we look at the most recent uh, developments in our own country in South Africa, uh, people like uh, Archbishop Tutu provide a, a, a fantastic beacon of leadership somebody who stays true to his own values for uh, decades and his strength for me i take a lot of uh, uh, encouragement and, and inspiration from him uh, because he stayed true to his own values to his own self um, in the more short term we see people like uh, Madan Sula, the ex uh, public protector uh, a very important uh, uh, relatively unknown and yet uh, she shines by sticking to to values of integrity and public service um, so for me leadership we've now come to a point where uh, leadership can be exercised across different spheres of socio-economic political life in different forms um, the debate that we have in the country at the moment in terms of those who aspire to be political leaders. Um, the, for me, what is missing in this debate is what are their values? Um, we know their, their ambition and aspirations to, to assume office, but for what values, for what type of ends, uh, based on what principles? That is where, uh, for me, the, the, the importance of leadership is. And in different spheres, I look up to different people for example, in the technological uh, sphere, um, I'm inspired by Elon Musk's um, uh, inspiration and vision uh, and fearless pursuit of um, the use of technology for a better uh, economic infrastructure. Uh, in, in social arena, I'm inspired by, uh, by people like Tutu. Um, and uh, in, 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 in economic sphere, uh, uh, there are a lot of people who, at a local level, are helping people to, to integrate themselves for sustainable living, uh, people who push for uh, social environmental integrity. Those are people who inspire me. Now, Iraj, how can people get hold of you and where should they follow you? Um, I'm active on Twitter. I've got my business in Johannesburg and our website. Uh, uh, these are various channels that people can uh, communicate with me and I'm very, uh, very keenly involved in, 
in social debate in South Africa and in Africa and globally. Uh, and I welcome any engagement with people of substance who want to, um, to discuss and focus on real issues that shapes our life these days. And last but not least, is there one thing you would really like to ask our listeners to take to heart and implement in their own leadership? Yes, I believe it's the time that uh, as human beings, uh, wherever we are, um, in South Africa or elsewhere, uh, we cannot be passive. I believe in, in human activism uh, based on ethics and principles. What we cannot do is to complain and be, be bitter about people's wrongdoings. Uh, we need to focus on the fact that for every uh, negative human activity, there are 10 to 20 positive human activities that we don't hear about. We need to be actively involved in ourselves becoming an agent of uh, propagating positivity within the society, propagating ethics and moral principles, and more importantly, ethical conduct in whatever, however humble or however large our positions might be, what we cannot avoid is being a, a, a social change agent based on our own actions, not on what we say needs to be done. Well, Iraj, thank you so much for sharing your wisdom. And if I may, I've, as a historian, I've always perceived Iran, the old Persia, as a home of wisdom. And and thank you very much for flying high the flag of integrity and authenticity and reminding us that we can make a difference every single day. Thank you very much. Thanks for inviting me to your program. All the best. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Nick.